Welcome back, viewers. This is Point of View. This is our last segment. Let's talk about the Naked Truth. What is it all about? Well, the Naked Truth, which is one year old now. Wow. Uh, what happened is um, I came from a very crazy background. Mm -hmm. And then I found that Christians are very, very judgmental. And then I knew there are people who feel that they are not good enough to be used. And people who feel that when they come to church, they want something, they want direction, but they feel that the church folk look at them like they have leprosy. Mm -hmm. So when, I st when the Lord spoke to me about the naked truth, that was uh, 2014, end of 2013. So 2014, January 25th, season one came in. Mm -hmm. And we brought people and talked to them about purpose. But not necessarily throwing too many scriptures at them, mm -hmm. but telling them this is the way you should go. And of course, I know what God was doing to them, and he was leading them by his spirit towards his, his things. Mm -hmm. You understand? But there were, we had people who were... 70% people have never met and are not even born again. Mm -hmm. But there's something they want. They're looking for something. So whoever gets them first will fill them with whatever they have. Mm -hmm. So if a devil worshiper got someone who is empty, guess what? They'll be filled with the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And people, after that, people said, wow, I love the fact the way you spoke. Which church do you go to? And I said, okay, now you can come to church. You know, and the Bible says, go ye to the world. They will not come to church. In Let fact, go. yeah, right now in the church we have over constipated Christians. People who have sat there for 10 years mm -hmm. being fed and they're not going to the loo. So they have stomach aches, they have spiritual kosher core. There are people who have been in church for 10 years and have never, never ever lost us, uh, led us all to Christ. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to bring the people to church and then fuel them, then send them out there to turn the goats into sheep and then bring them there, then feed those goats that have turned into sheep and then send them back again. It's like a conveyor belt. Mm -hmm. But now what you're having is constipation. Imagine if you eat for 10 days without going to the loo. What happens? You have a bad ache. And that's what is happening in the church right now. It's now rotting from inside. And people have become weak and they're struggling and they're looking for medicine but it's not working. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. So Naked Truth comes and talks to people about excellence, about purpose, about sex, about believing in yourself and about all these things and also how to be in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. I'm a pastor. I'm a movie actor. I discuss fashion. The religious folk will think I'm the devil's peer. Mm -hmm. Because how, how can you discuss fashion? How, how can you be a movie actor? Now we need people to understand that now you've been called even to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. To people to understand that some people have been given five, five gifts, some four, some two, some three, some one. But don't waste your time explaining your five gifts to a one gift kind of guy. Indeed. He will never get it. So mm -hmm. the naked truth is that free of charge, we never take any offering, we never charge anybody to enter. Mm -hmm. Just come, listen to what we have to say, nuggets of life, and then move on. Indeed, indeed. And uh, what has been the reception from um, the believers and the non-believers alike? Of course, in the beginning, it was very, they were very cold about it. Uh -huh. Some would tell me, oh, it has never been done before. And that's what gave me the zeal, the fact that it had never been done before. Mm -hmm. And some were, some were very iffy. But you see, if you start uh, making a decision based on the opinion of a turtle, you'll miss your giraffe mentality. You only have to eat from the top of the fruit mm -hmm. of the tree. Mm -hmm. So whoever likes it or not, there are people who the naked truth is born for. And we have numbers. We have new people every week coming in, every, every, every season coming in. And now we want to go all over the country and then the region and then all over the world. We shall have naked truth in every corner of this world. Indeed, indeed. It's a wonderful initiative. And um, uh, with due regard to specific issues, let's put um, the facts on the ground. Homosexuality and the church, where are we at? There's homosexuality even in the church, period. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's this gospel of it is well. This is not well. Mm -hmm. Just using scripture wrongly. To, to run away from discussing these issues. Homosexuality is diluting the church, period. And we have to speak about it without fear or favor. You know, without holiness you shall not see God. There's some things you just have to say the way it is because the things of God have no gray areas, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now the thing is, I, I see even some people within the kingdom, you go to other churches and you, you see people dressed in a manner to suggest that they're either homosexual or they're gravitating towards that side. Mm -hmm. You have to tell them, no, 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 be very careful. Be extremely careful. You sometimes go see uh, someone who's been in salvation for over 10 years, uh, showing her frontal view and everything is showing. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Hang on a minute, men are visual, whether you're a bishop or uh, a garbage collector. So what are you trying to do? We just have to speak some things. Mm-hmm. But you also don't blame these people so much because the moment the word of God is inculcated in them, some things fall off slowly. Indeed. Indeed, a progressive change. Yes. And what is the church's standpoint at the moment? And is it open to receiving such people? If you realize the church as a whole is not really discussing it. Mm-hmm. Indeed, indeed. It's, um, Until someone stands and decides to be unpopular for standing for the truth, these are things that will be swept under the carpet. And in due time, it will start smelling. Mm-hmm. I have not had the church, the body as a whole, coming and saying, you know what, this is our stand on homosexuality. We don't agree with it. This is our stand on lesbianism. We don't agree with it. Mm-hmm. To a non-believer, this is sort of chaotic. I mean, we have the Anglican electing and putting in place a, a gay bishop. We have the Catholics on the other side saying no. We have the Protestants saying this and that. And um, what, what does this speak and what does it uh, translate into for the church as a whole? It's because why we have so different views, in fact, in extreme levels, is because we cannot have very extreme views on serious fundamental issues and yet we s- subscribe to the same Bible. Mm-hmm. It means someone somewhere is using the Bible wrongly. Why can't we all say, what does God think about this? If we all say 10 of us are using the same Bible, yet on a fundamental issue like homosexuality, one would say God is okay with it, another one says God is not okay with it. Someone is not understanding the Bible well. Mm -hmm. Personally, as Robert Burale, I don't agree with homosexuality, Mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with lesbianism. Now, God hates homosexuality, but does not hate the homosexual. Okay. That's one thing we have to understand. Mm-hmm. God hates divorce, but does not hate the divorcee. Now, there is a way we have to be hard in preaching the word of God, but also love these people, because some of them, this thing is beyond them, because it was done to them from childhood. We know of some people who are now practicing homosexuals, who faced a lot of judgment until one of them says, hang on a minute, after I left my young sister's uh, funeral, I was told to go and sleep with my uncle, and my uncle started molesting me at the age of 10. Mm -hmm. And then, after a week of being molested, he started getting pissed off when the uncle did not molest him, meaning he started enjoying it. And now as a 42-year-old man, 43, I think, Mm -hmm. he was enjoying it. Now, such a person needed to be loved out of that situation Still being told, you know, I love you, but guess what? What you're doing is wrong. Mm-hmm. All right. So use the, 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 the bitter truth and then cover them with love. Mm-hmm. And that person, once they turn their life, to, uh, their life around, will go out there and do the same to other people and bring them back into the kingdom. And then we have a church that will operate in its fullness and its power. Indeed, indeed. Um, what has changed then and now? We have um, a lot of mismanagement of funds in, in the church. And we don't see a lot of this being um, brought up in mainstream churches, but we do see it in non-mainstream entities. Why is this so? I don't know what it means by mismanagement. Um, you know, when someone sees a pastor driving a Range Rover, mm-hmm. the first thing that comes into their mind is mismanagement. Yes. But is, is it really being mismanaged? Mm-hmm. Maybe not. Some, of course, I, I mean, I'm not defending the ones who really are in this for business. But there's nothing wrong with a pastor driving a Range Rover Sport. There's nothing wrong with a pastor wearing a Giorgio Armani suit. Mm-hmm. I hate Christians who say wearing a torn shirt is a sign of humility. Mm-hmm. It's actually a, sta- a sign of stupidity. Wow. I want a Christian who would wear a Giorgio Armani suit but walk with apostolic swag. Because you tell me about God, that God will give me good clothes, and yet you're the one who needs the, the manifestation. You're, in fact, you're in more need. I will not even listen to you. Sure. So I believe that also God wants to bless his people. How comes people don't have a problem when a member of the church is driving a Range Rover Sport? But when the pastor has a Range Rover Sport, there's a problem. Mm-hmm. Or they'll say that person is a C, is, is our marketing manager and is being rewarded by, by, by their CEO bonuses because they're doing work. Oh, hang on a minute. What about our CEO who is God? Indeed. His reward is even bigger than an earthly CEO. The Bible says gold and silver belongs to him, even the cattle on a thousand hills. Mm-hmm. So I have no problem. I think what happens is we want to do things, we tithe. God just says tithe, but does not tell you, now follow how the tithe is being used. Mm-hmm. But what having said that, that having that? said that, having said that, there are pastors, of course, who may be a need for their own 
selfish ends. For that one, I'm very careful and I say, they will get judged by God. Mm -hmm. But I have no problem a pastor living well. Because if a drug dealer can live well and is serving another devil, why can't a pastor who is serving God live well? The same Bible says you will live in houses that you did not build. Mm -hmm. Now, some pastors drive big cars that they have been given by members. And the members tell them, I am doing this, but I do not want it to be made public. I'm doing this in secret, okay. and that God will reward me in public. But the moment you see a pastor in a Range Rover spot, I'm telling you, meetings will be called. How much have you been tithing? That's none of our business. Okay. So Christians must come out from this thing that when you look broke, you're more anointed. <laughs> when you wear a bad shirt, you're, you're humble. You're actually stupid. Okay. So yeah. how do we get rid of this uh, capitalistic mentality that's going on? But it's true. Um, um, we also have to understand that having wealth does not mean you're the most anointed. Sometimes the brokest people have the biggest bank accounts. Uh -huh. If you don't know your purpose, you're as broke as they come. Okay. I think we need as a church to drive people towards their purpose. That, that thing that you can do for free. That thing that you, you can do effortlessly. And if you're taken towards your purpose, all other things will come into place. You will enjoy a house, you will enjoy a car, you will enjoy a wife, you will enjoy a good family. But you must take people to their purpose because that is the only thing God wants you to do. Live your purpose. Indeed. But there are people, unfortunately, who are conquering the wrong mountain successfully. Indeed, indeed. Wonderful and insightful perspective there. In studio with me has been Robert Borelli, motivational speaker, founder of Naked Truth and pastor. And we've been looking at the Kenyan society with due regard to Christianity, culture, and most especially the youth. Thank you very much for joining us in studio. Thank you for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, keep it point of view. I've been your host, Linda Kruger. Oh, <laughs>